Welcome and thank you for tuning into the Property Markets podcast, where we discuss all things property market, whether it's the house price index, mortgage and bank rates, transaction volumes, where's hot and where's not, there should be something for everyone with an interest in property. As ever, my name's Dan and I'm joined each week by Anthony to take a look at the latest topics. This week in episode six, we'll be taking a look at the where's hot and where's not of house prices, as well as touching on transaction volumes. We'll be looking at a number of charts, so if you've not found us on YouTube yet, head over there and search for Property Market Insights. If you're watching us on YouTube, please remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. I should have placed a link below this video to a page where you can submit your questions for future episodes, so please do get involved. Anthony, good morning. How are you doing this week? Yeah, morning, Dan. Very well. Thank you. Very well. Um, nice sunny week, hasn't it been so far? Um, another week of, of data, which is great. Um, transactions and house prices, as you said in the intro. And a bit later, another letter from... Mrs. Trellis of North Wales, which we'll look forward to. Yes, indeed. So where where's hot and where's not, Anthony? I've seen you've sent lots of charts through, so I guess you want to work through those in uh, good fashion. Yeah, sure. So if we kick off, just looking at the overall picture of um, house prices, this is the, the land registry data, the gold standard of the house price indices. Um, you know, more transactions in there than any other than any other of the indices. And it's official. House prices have started falling in the land registry. You can see in the chart there, um, they fell just under £1,300 or 0.04% last month, um, but are still up in 9.8%, so just under 10% in the year. So I think this will be the start of or the first of many falls in the land registry house price index. This is obviously the overall uh, UK picture within the regions and obviously within individual streets, a very different picture. So if we look at the next uh, slide, we see that actually in the month, house prices were up £1,400 in uh, Wales, just under £1,600 in the South East, Yorkshire and Humberside and the East Midlands also up. And West Midlands and London up a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. Um, it kind of doesn't really make much difference if it's only a couple of hundred pounds. But you will see that there are some gaps um, in that chart. Um, and that's where house prices didn't go up. Um, and if we look at that, that chart in grey, grey day, we see that overall England and UK were down, um, outer London down a bit, inner London uh, down two and a half thousand. Southwest took an absolute hammering, as you can see there, down on average six thousand uh, pounds, quite a big, quite a big move. East of England down three, um, and the northeast down just under a thousand pounds. So kind of different moving parts there as we as we move across the country. Putting that in context, though, uh, if we look at what's happened since COVID and annual house price inflation, um, please report no negative bars on those graphs. Um, the blue lines showing the increase since COVID um, and the orange line, the annual increase. And kind of just to point out there, everywhere but London is still up more than 25 percent, more than a quarter. Uh, since the start of the COVID pandemic. So I think it's, you know, yes, house prices are on the turn, but let's not forget just how much they have increased. What do you think to that, Daniel? Well, there is definitely no such thing as a UK housing market. And, um, you know, it, it's, 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 it's interesting, even at these big regional levels, to see that, you know, some areas are still holding firm. Um, I know we've talked about this before, you know, if you, if you decide that you're not staying where you are and, and you decide to move out of area, you are actually supporting those micro markets where you may be going to. And suddenly we see an increase in demand, of course, increased demand, push prices up. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to see that, yes, there is an overall sense of doom and gloom, but there are clearly some pockets in there where uh, prices are continuing to hold firm. Um, how long will that continue for, though? Who knows? Um, I, I think, obviously, as Charlie would say, that there's that there's an awful lot of, um, yes, of course, you know, we must admit there is um, cost of living crisis, you know, energy bills are still going up. There's an awful lot of other factors that are coming into play that are going to affect things. And, you know, we're just steer, seeing the start of that tipping point with the land reg data, which, of course, that is looking backwards, isn't it? On average, I mean, the land reg data, we're looking back at transactions that started several months ago, aren't we, like that, Anthony? Yeah, it, it, so it's, as you know better than I do, uh, Daniel, just how long housing transactions are taking. So the, the land registry is where the 
uh, the the documentation has been filed with the land registry. So in some senses, it's a it's a little bit down to how quick your conveyancer uh, or solicitor files the documentation as to when it's registered. Um, probably for them each month initially is around 40% of all transactions are in there, and then that picture gets more and more accurate as, as the days and weeks weeks go by. Um, so there are revisions each month, but then there's revisions to the the other indices as well, the Halifax and the Nationwide. Um, we had some interesting comments from Lloyd's banking group uh, this week, uh, which which confused Mrs. Trellis, and sh she wrote in, um, she says, Dear Property Markets uh, Insight Podcast, I um, enjoyed last week's um, episode with, with Charlie and didn't enjoy his talk of 35% house price falls, but then yesterday, or another Charlie, uh, Charlie Nunn, the chief executive of Lloyd's banking group, said that house prices were only going to fall 7%. So what's going on with all these Charlies? Yours sincerely, Mrs. Trellis from North Wales. Well, you know, finger on the pulse as always, uh, Mrs. Trellis. Yes, we had Lloyd's um, banking group uh, results on on Wednesday, and they're the the biggest lender, the biggest lend mortgage lender in the UK. Um, they also produce the the Halifax House Price Index. That's one of their one of their brands. Um, and you know they they know a thing or two um, about mortgages and the housing market. And in their results pack, um, as you can see on this graph, they had their forecasts for what house prices are going to do. Um, and the the green line is their latest um, forecast that they put out on Wednesday. And they're seeing or anticipating rather a seven percent drop in house prices in 2023. Um, and, you know, I know uh, Charlie Lambden wasn't keen on, on annual forecasts. He wanted to know the peak to trough. And, well, you know, Lloyd's were listening. They, they said, well, we think the peak to trough is going to be 12%. So that's quite a big difference from, from Charlie's uh, 35%. Um, and, you know, I, I guess maybe it's because I'm a glass half full guy, but, you know, Lloyd's probably have more data than any of us in terms of working out where they think is going to go. You know, probably the most informed opinion of, of all the mortgage lenders uh, really do have their finger on the pulse. Um, and, you know, it makes it makes Charlie's kind of 35 percent drop seem seem very large indeed. <clears throat> um, and I, I, you know, I hope and I believe it will be closer to the the, seven, the 12 percent peach trough than than the 35 um, percent peach trough that Charlie was talking about. Do you agree on that, Daniel? Do you think, you know, who's who's got the best I'm not sure about who who's got the best data. I think it, it's just it's just who's who's looking at a crystal ball and who's got more cloud and who doesn't. I think the it's very difficult. You cannot predict the future. It's very difficult to predict the future. It's very easy though to influence people's thinking about what they should do. Um, I always say it's worth remembering that if you are not selling, none of this affects you at all. Absolutely none of it. If you're staying put, your house price is not dropping because no one's making you an offer and you're not getting out. So whatever happens, if you're sitting pretty over the next however many years, you'll ride it out and no, it doesn't matter what happens because you know statistically every 10 years or every 10 year period, house prices have gone up. So no one needs to panic. If you're thinking of selling, that's a very different matter. But a relatively small percentage of the population that are actually thinking of getting out or indeed moving on. And there, of course, those people are affecting the figures. But of course, you've just got to be careful that you're buying within your affordability uh, and you are selling um, at the correct level. You know, you've got to listen to what buyers are, are saying, look at their affordability. And if you've got to move, you've got to move. But if you're staying in the market, you're just riding it out. Again, it doesn't matter. If you're cutting your losses and you're cashing out and you're moving into rented or you're moving abroad, and you're taking your money out of the UK property market. There's a very big difference then because you're then saying, what did I put in? What am I getting out? How much did that hurt? If you're staying in, you're riding the waves. It, it kind of doesn't really uh, concern you. So just just crack on. So I think the more people that worry about what's happening, the more people that are concerned about, you know, all oh, the price is going down. And the more noise that that makes, that then I think it does become a self-fulfilling prophecy where suddenly no one's moving, demand drops off a cliff, and guess what? Suddenly house prices do drop because, and it evidence that house prices drop because, of course, um, there, there just isn't a market anymore. So, you know, if you can afford to move or you're wanting to move, 
don't hesitate just crack on with it. It, it the house prices have always gone up and down um, that's just a fact of owning a property house price can go up as well as down so really don't panic about it too much as long as you can afford things but yes i'm not convinced that 35 percent is Gosh, I've said it now. Maybe I've jinxed it, but I'm not, I think that's an awful lot. I think historically, looking back to plan what's going forward, I think that's very unlikely. Some very big sources also suggesting that that's unlikely as well. So I like to remain positive. I know Charlie's a very half glass full, or so he says. Um, but um, I, 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 yeah, not sure. I'm feeling the force today. See my Star Wars uh, top on and my ATST I'm wearing today. I'm, I'm definitely feeling quite positive today. Um, so yes. Um, your next chart, Anthony, um, where are we going on to next? Yeah, I, I mean, I thought you, you, you touched on affordability um, there, which is always a, a key one. And if we look at the first time buyer wage and deposit growth, I think that, again, there's some potentially good news here on, on the, the, the house price front. So the graph there showing that the, the wage growth um, or the wages in, in orange and deposit levels in blue, and they're they're rebased an index so you can see how they're moving relative to each other so starting at 100 in 1986 and you see that wages you know go up and up a slow line i mean they have to be fair you know between 1986 started at 100 and they're at over 400 um in 2022 so a big increase but nothing compared to the way that deposits have shot up and there was a really interesting article, I don't know if you saw it, um, this week in the Times talking about have we become an inheritocracy? Mm, so yes. you know, is your ability to own a home based more on whether your parents own their home? And so, you know, if you if you don't have uh, property owning parents, you're very unlikely to be able to afford, afford your home. And I kind of thought about that and looked into that. And um, I think I mentioned before that it wasn't until 1971 that we had 50% home ownership in the UK. And so if we if we say, okay, at the time, the average mortgage was 25 years. So fast forward to 1996, you know, and that first wave of mass affluent are starting to be mortgage free. Um, I know it's not quite as simple as that, but it's it's not not a bad proxy. And then you can see I've highlighted on the graph where that that kind of wave of mass affluent paying off their mortgage happens. And you can see that's the kicker for deposits. I mean, they kind of shoot up as we become a, a property owning nation. And so yeah, let's not forget just how much money there is um, from from inheritance and from, from family gifts. Increasingly, you know, um, parents aren't waiting and leaving property in the wills. They're, 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 they're gifting as, as, as they go. And if we treated the bank of mum and dad as a bank, they would be the 10th biggest lender in the country. Right, so a huge impact on the housing market. And so when we talk about affordability, and I know a lot of people talk about the house price earnings index, which is the house price divided by wages, and they say, oh, it's really unaffordable. Um, that doesn't take into account deposits and other things. If you're fortunate enough to have, um, you know, finance from other sources, friends, family, and parents. So again, just to bear in mind, it is a big factor in, in the housing market, because obviously, home ownership, the majority of people own their own home. So that wealth transfer is going to continue for some time to come. Um, and then the, the kind of the last the last chart, if we look at housing transactions, as you say, do we get a stalemate? Do we actually move? Do we just stay put? So we had housing transactions out for January earlier this week. Um, you can see down, down a little bit. Um, you know, I hope I don't get into trouble for having such a big arrow. It's only a small decrease there. Um, still broadly in line with um, the longer run average. And, you know, although I'm glass half full, I think that number will go down further as we really start to see the impact of the, 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 the mini budget from last year. So this is kind of the transactions completing in January. If you think the mini budget was end of September, so that's not really caught the majority of those transactions. So we're going to see some declines there. Um, I believe, as we move forward. But in terms of, you know, where is hot and where is not, um, you know, I'm hopefully I'm going to get the names right this time. You know, I've, I've, I've been practicing on a few of them. So should we, should we say, it's like, should we go through the top percentage risers, the top three? Absolutely. Do it. Okay. In, in first place, up an incredible 5.3%. It's in Wales, watch out pronunciation, and it is 
Keridigian. Brilliant. Which I think was in there last month as well. But Keridigian, thank you very much. Um, uh, do go and see it. Lovely place to go and see. Up 5.3%. Second place um, near Blackpool. Filed up 5.2%. So very close. Very close in second percent. And then in third place, West Lancashire. Up 4.4%. Now, in monetary terms, in monetary terms, you know, that nasty big city, London, does well again. Boo. You know, Tower Hamlets up £21,000. Mm. Not bad. Um, just ahead of the city of London, up 19990 to be precise. So just a smidgen under £20,000. And then Windsor Maidenhead in the southeast up £16,000. Um, if we turn to percentages in the year, though, this is good. Now, some nice big numbers um, here. So if you are in West Lancashire, well done you. Up 23.8%. That's not bad, is it? Almost a quarter in a year. You must be feeling very well on that. And um, not to be not to be sniffed out in Wales, Blind Eye Gwent, 23.3%. And then in third place, um, Pendle near Burnley and Bradford, up 215 Um Now... When it comes to the monetary things, City of London up a hundred and sixty-six thousand pounds. Wow. Boom. And Tower Hamlets up ninety thousand pounds. So that's the good news. Um where have things been going down? So the losers in percentage terms in the month. East Dumbartonshire. I feel like I'm doing the football scores. East Dumbartonshire <laughs> down 4.6%. Kensington and Chelsea down 4.5%. Big moves there, big moves down. Um, and then and then in third place, Swansea uh, down 3.9%. So pretty much the whole country covered there in the in the losers. Um, now in monetary terms, uh, Kensington and Chelsea down 60,700. Uh, Islington in second worst place, down 24,270, uh, followed by Hammersmith and Fulham, down 21,370 pounds. The annual losers, it's London again. Oof, London again, feeling that feeling that hit. Uh, annual losers, Westminster, down 13.4%. Wonder if that kind of started to go down after the mini budget. Uh, Kensington and Chelsea, down 9.5. And Islington, uh, down 5.3%. And putting that into monetary terms, uh, the biggest loser was Westminster, 141,000. Kensington and Chelsea, 133,000. And Islington, 38,000 pounds. So a lot of people in London worse off, uh, feeling a bit, a, a, a bit less wealthy uh, this month. But um, yeah, a mix as always. But in the grand scheme of things, based on when they I bought I never those... read too much. Sorry, I never read too much into one month's figures. Oh, no, absolutely. But bearing in mind what those people paid for those properties and if they're moving on now, probably what they've got in their back pocket, whether it's in real terms or not in real terms. Um, I know that uh, last week Charlie laboured the point about real and I came off thinking, hang on a minute, um, we only already give a monkeys about money in our pocket, surely. I'm not interested in real. I want to know that if I sell my property and I put £200,000 in my pocket, I'm kind of not worried about whether that £200,000 would have gone further six years ago than that £200,000 would go now. Uh, I'm kind of interested in the fact that I've got two hundred grand in my pocket or fifty grand in my pocket or eighty grand or whatever it is. So to say that anyone is thinking about anything other than the money in their pockets. I'm not sure anyone does that calculation, do they? You don't, I don't. Anyone thinking of selling thinks about how much am I going to make? I, I don't. I, and I think it's because inherently we're all lazy, right? We don't, our brains don't like working, right? We don't like doing calculations um, in in our heads. And classic example, right? So my, uh, my nephew was up um, for the weekend. He's looking at university accommodation and uh, he lives uh, near Bristol. And um, he was up and we went out for a beer yeah, and he could not believe, he could not believe that he had to pay seven pounds for a pint, <laughs> for a pint of lager. Wow. And, you know, he wasn't going, hang on a minute. You know, he, he was he was looking at the nominal figure, right? It's like, that's true, that's seven pounds out my pocket. I mean, not that he uses cash because he's a youngster, just taps his card. But, you know, he, he wasn't going, 
Oh, in real terms, you know, that used to be five pounds sixty. Now look at it. It's like, no, it's truth, that's expensive. I was like, yes, it is. Um, where's my pint? I said. Anyway, <laughs> no, he did buy me. Okay. But yeah, nominal nominal all the way for me, I think, because that's what we actually deal in. Um, you know, we notice things are getting more expensive and we notice things getting more expensive because we're paying more nominal money for them. That's why. Yeah. Indeed. Right. Um, I know we had an epic episode uh, last week, which was well over an hour. Um, Was there anything else we wanted to cover this week or are we going to keep this episode nice and sharp and sweet? Yeah, I I think I think let's keep this one. You know, the the data is the data is the data. You know, house prices are on the turn. It's not one single market. Let's not forget that. Um, You know, and if you're not moving, you know, this is just um, an armchair sport, isn't it? So, um, you know, we like <laughs> we can talk about house prices till the till the cows can come home. Um, but we don't want to take up too much of your time this week because, you know, you've got you've got better things to do than listen to me waffle on. Absolutely. Well, look, other than that, all I would say is that if anyone's listening to the podcast or you're watching on YouTube and you have specific questions about your region and you want to know what's going on, then get in contact with us. The link's underneath the video. Um, secondly, um, I know we touched on it in previous episodes, but um, property logbooks, digital property logbooks powered by Twindig are a phenomenal way of keeping you up to date with the property prices, trends, and what's going on specifically to your home and how it's being impacted by property transactions and price fluctuations. So if you haven't got one, visit propertysearchesdirect.co.uk, claim a logbook for free, it's entirely free, and get involved and be updated each month with the Twindig um, housing market data um, so that you know exactly what's going with your property. And if you've got more than one property, claim one for every single one and on your dashboard you'll have access to all of your uh, information for all of your properties. So uh, well worth doing if you haven't got involved with that yet. So thank you very much, Anthony, again for that fantastic information. It's good to know what's going on. Of course, we'll be revisiting house prices again on future episodes but for the moment that's a wrap on episode six so next week we'll be looking in more detail at mortgage application rates and interest rates to see the latest developments on those fronts plus of course any additional breaking news along with answers to any questions that you raised in the meantime thank you for joining us again today we look forward to catching up with you next week so for the time being it's goodbye from him goodbye and it's goodbye from me goodbye